excited to talk today about something really cosmic and magical for you lovers out there. It's we're talking about the twin flame, the soulmate connection. What is a soulmate? What is a twin flame? What's the difference? And I have an amazing expert on this subject with me today, Susan Allen. Hey, Susan, how are you? Great. Great to see you. Awesome. So let's dig right into this. Um, soulmate, twin flame, we throw those words around. I'm a matchmaker, and of course, everyone's looking for their soulmate and you know I I sometimes think is there I mean we we travel in soul groups and then the soulmate can be kind of tricky people think it's going to be all a bed of roses but ha 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 ha, ha I don't think so <laughs> tell us the nitty gritty ha. tell us what's really going on with the soulmate connection well first of all the ultimate level is called twin flames okay. so I want to be very specific your soulmate could be your best friend. Your soulmate could be your dog. Mm -hmm. Your soulmate could be a parent, a twin sibling. A soulmate, of course, is what we talk about when we talk about that deeply loving, perfect life partner. Mm -hmm. However, I rather talk about twin flames because twin flames are lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, where you have the opportunity to constantly evolve to move forward in more magnificent and dynamic and exquisite and ecstatic ways. So if you have a choice between what I just described as soulmate and what I just described as twin flame, what are you picking? <laughs> but now how do we pick it? I, I haven't, I've been in many relationships. I've been married three times. I've been in other relationships. I'm, I'm a Gemini, so there's two girls here dating and getting married, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I started early, you guys made a mistake and I'm not that young. So, you know, it, things happen and, <laughs> and I'm in Hollywood, but, but I have not had, I don't believe that I've met my twin flame. How do you, I, I believe I've, all my relationships have either been karmic or soulmate yeah. where I'm working out issues because I've never, uh. had, a, ha, never had a smooth ride in, in a relationship. <laughs> And so how do we find that everybody wants their twin flame, but is this something rare? How do we find it? Okay, so this is so easy, you won't believe it. This is real easy. Okay. If, and easy for you, Marla. Easy for me, easy for those of us who have already done the work on our ability to connect to the divine. Mm -hmm. We already have psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. We are already capable of going into deep meditative states. So that is the requirement. Okay. You certainly don't have to be the most beautiful, the most brilliant, age is not a factor, etc. But you must have already done some work on yourself to be able to reach into that state where you can ask God or the divine or Jesus or Buddha or Krishna okay. for that perfect, perfect, perfect twin flame. Now, I made the same mistake you're describing. My first and my second marriage they were each in their own way torture. Mm -hmm. I ended both of them. As you know, because you and I are friends, my second marriage was a life-threatening divorce. Mm -hmm. And I had to survive it. I had to go into hiding. It was hideous. Mm -hmm. I asked for karmic relationships because I didn't know any better. And so that's what I got. And I had this misunderstanding when I saw who they had been to me in past lives and they had not treated me well in past lives. And that includes the man who up to now was the love of my life and a former fiance. And again, I didn't move forward with that marriage because by then I'd gotten smarter. But when I saw that these people had treated me abysmally and abusively in past lives, in some case, 10 other past lives, I then had this funny idea they would make it up to me in this life. Okay, I invented that craziness. Okay. Nobody ever told me this, and believe me, it ain't true. So when you find somebody that you have this excitement with, you have this connection with, be very, very cautious because it could become very bad news for you or it could become the most magnificent news in the world. And the only way to know 
is to learn from me how to finesse for information. Mm-hmm. Yes, and to learn that from me how to check right. what are you hearing. Right. Is it you need to be hearing? Because fool me once, shame on right. You know that one, but fool me twice, shame on me. So I had to learn these skills, and I developed a lot of these skills. Yeah, that finessing uh, is so important in dating. Um, Give us a couple of examples of finessing for information, because we'll go on dates, you know, as a matchmaker, I send a lot of people on dates, you know, 17 years, I've thousands of people have gone on dates, and I get feedback, and the disastrous things that go on, and then them getting into relationships and not knowing things, where you have a a certain way that you can teach people. And by the way, you guys, Susan gives a one hour free session, phone session, no strings attached. And um, the links are below, but I just wanted to add that in because she can teach it to you, but we're going to give you some, I'd love it if you gave us an example of finessing, like we're on a date right now or something. Right. Exactly. So we're having dinner. It's our first date. Right. And we seem very interested in each other, but my, I have a job. I have a job to find out about you. Okay. Now, I would, of course, had a phone call with you, and it would have been a lengthy enough phone call for me to get some information. So on the phone call, I'm saying, well, by the way, my name is Susan Allen. I'd love to know your full name, and you tell me. And, you know, I do such and such, and this is my website. Please feel free to find out anything you want to about me before we meet, and I'd love to know the name of your company or where you work. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing that, on the phone with somebody, by the way, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm already on LinkedIn, so I know who is this person, is it real? Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating when you can't find anything, there better be a good explanation. Sometimes there is. And as you proceed in the phone call, oh, so I imagine, you know, you're you're 40 years old and you're the executive vice president of such and such. And so now what you want to find out is about his career if you can't find him on LinkedIn. Or if you don't have time to look. So I imagine you've been with that company for some time if you're the EVP. Mm-hmm. And you wait to hear what he says. Right. Now, on the phone, when people hesitate, they can either be lying mm-hmm. or they can be preparing a more thoughtful answer. And you always are on the phone with a pad. I don't care if it's like me last week, four in the morning with somebody on the East Coast. I had a pen. I had a pad. I'm making notes. Because you can't remember this stuff. No. There's just no way. So what's another point? You want to know if this guy is monogamous. So you want to find out. So let's say it's somebody a little bit older who's now been divorced. He told you he was divorced. I imagine, you know, that was difficult because certainly nobody ever gets married because they want to get divorced. And you don't say anything else. You just leave it hanging and see if somebody jumps in and says, yes, that bitch, or... (laughs) Or lets you know just by that silence how heartbroken he was. Now, if somebody's angry, you got a problem. He didn't do the work on himself. If somebody's heartbroken, you got a problem. He didn't do the work on himself. What you're looking for is an answer I got actually today from a lovely new friend who said, I never blame anything for on anyone. I'm responsible for everything that's happened in my life. If something's happened, I don't like it. I look at how I can solve it. I look at how I could avoid it. And you know me, Marla. That sounds like I answered that way, right? Right, right. I would guess. So that's what you're looking for. If somebody has children or if you have children and you want to make sure, is this a guy who would be okay with a a blended family? Mm -hmm. Then you have to learn how to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. But... It's just as important to start to be flirty on the phone. Right. You don't want it to sound so clinical and like an... That's right. But even more to the point, you're looking for a lover. Right. You're not looking for a banker. And you're not looking for just a best friend. You're looking for a lover. So you have to start seeing, can I be seductive with this guy Mm -hmm. or with this woman? Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm a man and I'm talking to a woman on the phone and she's cold, she's not my partner. That happened. She, that uh, happened the other day. A guy. I gave him a number of a woman. She was. Uh, he says, "Listen, I've already got an attorney. I don't need." Uh, and because uh, she's an attorney, and she was. 
very cold. And listen, you called me during work hours and uh, did it, well, why did she pick up? You know, she was very cold. He felt very uncomfortable. And then he says, listen, I don't, I don't right. want to meet her. I, I, I want a warm woman. Good for him. Yes. Good for him. Good for him. And send her to me for a free session. Because <laughs> she missed the boat. You know, she missed a big chance there. Yeah, that's true about anything. You never pick up the phone unless you're ready to pick up the phone. Right, right. Now her, it's okay, conscious. This, uh, I asked her why she did this. Why does she t uh, be so cold on the phone? Because I'd heard this uh, feedback about her in the past from other men, and, I, and she's in her mid-40s. And uh, she says, well, yes, I will admit that I am kind of stern and cold on the phone. And that's because I feel like I want to save that sweet, soft part of me Ugh. for a man <laughs> that I'm involved with, for when I'm involved with him. Well, she's not getting involved with anyone no. because it's stopping no, but, at the get-go no. there. So, and, and guess what? You and I, we don't even want to be her friend because <laughs> in life, we want people who are heart centered yes. you and I yes and so does every single man when he selects his mate right that doesn't mean that you can't be a beautiful heart centered loving partner and also a brilliant attorney you mm -hmm. can do both you know and, and this woman choice. is lovely she you know I've known her for a long time I like her she's got a great I think she has a great heart but as far as men she's treating it more like business and you're not getting right. that soft part of me yeah. You know, you're not She's getting frightened. it. So, yeah. She's frightened. She's frightened. So yeah, There's got to be some scarier. issues. We've all got issues from childhood or whatever. we got to delve into and clear. So, yes, whatever that That's is. Right. But, but yes, right. warmth on the phone. So you want to finesse. You want to be warm, a little flirty, not make it like a job interview, and find out some information about that person. Exactly. And then on the date, so, let's, so now we've done the phone one. Now okay. we're sitting on a date together. Yeah. So on the date, as a woman, and let's imagine just you're the man for a second. Mm -hmm. So you're looking into somebody's eyes. From the minute you get out of your car yeah. or the Uber or the airplane, <laughs> before you get out of the vehicle, you are ready. You are present. You are envisioning yourself with this man. You are there already. Yes. You don't have time to walk through the restaurant like you're on business, you know, business appointment, and then sit down and then go through gathering. No, uh-uh, you've lost him. Right. He doesn't have time for that. He wants a woman. He comes home. He puts the key in the lock. The door opens, and there you are rushing to throw your arms around him. And I don't care if you're together for 12 minutes or 1,200 years. That is what you and I as women want, and that is what almost every single man wants. Well, I did that the other night. The, the other night, my husband came home and because uh, he works nights, and I did. I rushed uh, to him, and I hugged him and stuff. And usually I'm in bed. You know, I'm in bed at midnight one when he comes home. But I did rush and hug him and all that. And he, the next day, he even says, wow, the way you greeted me last night was phenomenal. He mentioned it and thought about it. So yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Because that is what is the glue yes. between a couple, whatever couple. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, gay, lesbian, anything, a couple, right. people who love each other. You need glue and you have to keep creating new glue. You have to keep re-gluing the surfaces. You do. So on that date that you're going to have that um, feeling the man's going to get from you that you are made creating that beautiful setting that you're present with him that's a great that is so great because uh i get a lot of feedback too that men say well we're on the date she's nice she's beautiful but she's digging in her purse for, uh turn it for the phone responding to a text then turning it off and then ah, and then ah. this and then she's got to go to the bathroom and then that, so she and some of them say she has no it's like add if you're going to the bathroom during a dinner date, which you may need to do, mm -hmm. first of all, if you want to do that before the date starts, get to the restaurant early. Yes, good idea. So make sure you get to the restaurant early if you had a long drive, you fluff and puff and all that, and now you come out and you stand with the maitre d' and ask for the table of the person you're meeting. Yeah. But always be 
absolutely 1,000% on time. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Not one minute late. Right, right. Now, if you're getting up to going, go to the ladies' room, make sure you time this accurately. Mm -hmm. So after the entree, before the dessert arrives. Right. But make sure you let your date know what you want for dessert or you'd be happy to share something before you disappear. And when you leave, if this is someone you want to see again and the bathroom is in the same direction where he's sitting, just gently touch his shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, this is basic neuro-linguistic programming. Yes. So just touch his shoulder. Connect with him. Right. These are such small and such crucial indications. Awesome. Thank they you. Work. Susan, thank you so much. These are already tips that you guys can be using. And uh, if you want to know more, um, you can have a free session with Susan. Also, you know what we did, Susan and I, for you ladies out there, we did a program, a one-hour program in the studio called How to Marry a Billionaire. And, uh, or just a great guy. It <laughs> doesn't have to be a billionaire. And you can watch that. You can uh, go to my website under free training. Um, my links are below, marlamartinson.com, and that'll bring you to it. And, and um, you can watch the training for free and then uh, work with us more if you want. But uh, it's just a gift for you. And Susan, thank you so much for talking about Twin Flames and how we can thank connect you. with our dates and our men. It's so important. And uh, yeah. much love to all of you cosmic uh, people out there. Bye, everybody. Thank you.